Well, hello, scrappers. Mike here. Welcome back to my channel. And I thought I'd give you a quick look at my new favorite method for ashing IC chips. This works really, really well. So let me give you an overview of what's going on here. So I've got my new favorite toy here, my propane weed burner. I have it strapped to the arms of my stepladder here and aimed down at my foundry furnace. But we're not going to use the foundry furnace for anything other than a, a stand for this. Got a cheap skillet I bought at the flea market for just a couple bucks. Sitting on there, cast iron skillet. Got a propane tank. Got some long tongs. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some IC chips that have been delegged. Got a video on my delegging process. I'll put a link to that in the upper right if you're interested. But I'm going to put some IC chips that have been delegged in here. And we're going to incinerate them and they'll come out nice and oxidized in white. And it's going to be really quick. It only takes about five minutes a batch. So this is not going to be a long video. We're just going to cover uh, the incineration of the chips because I have lots of videos on all the other steps in the process. So let me get some chips in there, and we'll get started. Okay. So these have all been delegged. No legs on them. A variety of different types. Dual inlines, flat packs. There's a few BGAs. There's also some LEDs and some other stuff mixed in. Whoops. I pick up the escapees and throw them in. But I think that's about enough for one run. We don't want to overload it. Let me get the escapees in and we'll start it up. All right, I've zoomed in a little bit so you can see the action a little better. Let's get this show on the road. And we're off and running really quickly. So basically, I just have to uh, keep this stirred so that all the chips actually get exposed to the heat and exposed to the air. And we burn all of the plastic off and everything that's left gets well ashed and turns white. So I just have to jump in here and stir it from time to time. But you can see how quickly those chips are cooking off. I mean, uh, normally, in the past, I would put them in the foundry furnace down here and cook them in the furnace while blowing air in to oxidize them. And this process takes a long time. And the foundry furnace really gets way too hot for that process. And sometimes it melts the metals into globs. Don't want to melt the metals. I just want to burn off the plastic. And what else is interesting about this process, and somewhat surprising, is that the smoke is not nearly as bad as I was afraid it would be. Burning them out in the open air like this? No. There's a little bit of smoke, but it's not too bad. Not too bad at all. we got another escapee. One popped out. But uh, I hope you can see on the video, some of the chips are already turning white. I just got to keep it all stirred. So that everything has a chance to get thoroughly oxidized. But this goes a lot quicker than doing them in the foundry furnace. And I think it uses a lot less propane. And it's too bad it's such a bright day. This is, this is impressive. Uh, on a cloudy day. But you can see how the flames are, are dying down, the smoke's dying down. These things are cooking off quick. Yeah, 
Yeah, this is this is happening super quick, so much quicker than my old method. I can get multiple runs through here, you know, in less than a half an hour. Probably I could do, you know, one run in five or 10, 15 minutes tops. So, cause these are almost done already. And this is real time, this is not sped up. I just gotta make sure everything on the bottom gets a chance to be on top. Yeah, once the flames stop and the smoke stops and everything's white, like it's getting, um, they're done, basically. Got to stir it up good, make sure everything's cooked. Let it go for a little while longer. Yeah, there's not much left in there that needs cooking off. Now there's a little more flame, probably not showing up in the daylight, but I can see it. I see gold. There's some gold on the bottom of the pan. Okay, they look done, but I've got to let them go for another few seconds or a minute just to make sure. Sure, we're all thoroughly oxidized. Now you can see how white they're getting. But I would say they are done. So, turn off the gas. And yeah, look. Really, no smoke, no nothing. I'd say they're done. Now, those are wicked hot. I'm going to let them sit before I do anything with them. And, uh, you know, but if I, I could dump them out into a heat-proof container and start another batch right now. My heat-proof container is in use doing something else, though. So I'm going to let these cool and dump them off into a plastic bucket. And then get another load in and get that going. So anyway, I just wanted to show you my new favorite way of ashing IC chips. You saw how quick that was. That was real time. Not sped up, not time lapse, nothing. That was real time. And those are done. So, yeah, this works great. Um, these weed burners, you can find these in a lot of home center stores, big box stores. Um, you can get them on Amazon, too. I'll put a link to one on Amazon. I think they sell this very same one on Amazon. So um, you need a long set of tongs. And some gloves, because these things, you don't want to get anywhere near this without gloves on. Otherwise, your hands will blister really quickly. And the tongs get really, really hot, too. Because you got to stir this. you got to keep it stirred. Um, just make sure everything on the bottom gets exposed to the heat. And then exposed to the oxygen on top, too. So you got to keep it stirred. But it works really, really well. I'll give you a close-up look at the uh, ash chips before we go, just to show you how well it works. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Look how white those are. Those are all thoroughly ashed and oxidized. I love it. And look how quick that was. Amazing. All right, so these chips are ready for further processing to get their gold and silver. 
But I have a lot of other videos on that. I'll put a link at the upper right if you want to see the rest of the process. But uh, I think we won't belabor this video. I think this will, this is it. I think this has been great. So if you think it's great too, if you found this video at all interesting, educational, informative, whatever, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to see my future videos. Check out my second channel, Electro Geek 64. There's good interesting stuff going on over there if you're at all interested in electronics or retro computing. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching this one. Bye.